Hi there, David Taylor or Mr. Pelagonium as people like to call me. Back with another video blog for the Pelagonium and Geranium Society. Uh, we've got a few blooms just beginning to emerge. So let's have a look around and see what's going on in this sort of mid-May period. Four weeks to go to the show weekend. Hi there, well it's good to see you again. Um, it's been what, about two or three weeks I think since I did my last video. Um, now things are beginning to really grow on. Uh, lots of plants are just beginning to throw a few blooms. Uh, perhaps most notably this lovely one. This is one of my seedlings from last year. Lovely big bloom, a lovely deep rich blood red uh, feather. On a sort of uh, a sort of pinkish orange base. Interesting, this one. I mean, it does look very similar to a plant called hazel rose, which um, come out all oh, forty odd years ago, and uh, a very good variety. So it's a job to know whether anything will happen with these. But I will keep a number of these going uh, because I personally like them, and they'll be very good for show in the future. Uh, but these have got massive bloom heads, uh, and they will make really, really good show plants. So I will certainly keep these going. That particular one, uh, I don't think I've given that to Fibrex to trial, but we'll have to see how it goes. Now the main thing is I've got a bit of further news about the virtual show. Now the virtual show we're going to hold on the PAGS members Facebook page. Obviously it's a members only uh, invitation so, so people will need to upload a small video uh, and I'll perhaps just give a little run through about how to do that in this video here. It's quite straightforward, very short video just to see an all-round view of the plant and then a, a final view of it from the front. Uh, which is more or less how you'd see it in a show anyway. I mean, the brilliant thing about this show, the virtual show, is that any member from around the world, and I know we've got members dotted about all over Europe, some in the States, that everybody will be able to participate in it. And it's going to be really great fun. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, you're basically going to upload your videos uh, from the Thursday, um, which I think is the 11th, thinking of my dates, uh, through to the Sunday. So you'll have four days to upload your videos. Um, you know, you can sort of take the video, whatever, whatever one of those days you wish, and you can upload it to the PAGS members Facebook page. It's brilliant that people from all over the world are going to be able to participate in this. So it's going to be really interesting. Now with the video, you can just use your phone. Now the key thing is, Use it in landscape format. So you just go to your camera, um, uh, choose video, and that'll put it out to the widescreen format automatically, or should do. I'm using an iPhone, obviously. You can use any type of mobile or smartphone that's got a, a video camera. Ideally, you want um, sort of 1080p is the ideal one. It'll, be, it'll enable us to be able to load up the video in, in sort of full screen mode and get a really good picture of it. One of my dwarfs that's flowering here is not a show plant, but it, it's got some good blooms on it. Uh, and it's just a question of, say, perhaps standing back from a distance to, uh, to see the, uh, the full potted plant in the uh, frame and just press. You'll see the countdown of the length of time that you're doing and just go around it. Go around it like that, sort of keep an eye on what's being filmed. Sorry, it's not quite so easy when you're looking at it through a screen on a mobile. But you can just go around like that and just give a final view of its best side probably like that and stop it. And that was about 20 seconds, a little bit over, but we'll forgive a little bit of, you know, just a few seconds over. An alternative is just click the button and turn it round manually if you want to continue to see what's in your frame. Turn it round and then we're seeing the all round view and stop. That's on 15 seconds exactly. And you're, you're seeing a full view in its entirety all the way around and that gives the judge a really good idea of what the plant's like all around. But when you've uploaded your video, just include the class 
number um, it's one to ten I think there's only ten classes the name of the cultivar and the part size that it's in of course when you uh, post uh, your name is is held within that information anyway so you don't need to add that because uh, the post obviously includes your details your your own personal details so we didn't need that to be added uh, it's just the plant details really we need to know uh, and that's it uh, I'm looking forward to seeing plants from hopefully all over the world from our members Right now, one thing I have had to do, um, I've had to sort of clear down a lot of plants. I've got lots of plants under the benches now, uh, primarily to give the plants that I'm aiming to have for show plenty of room. I'm filming this on Saturday the 16th, I think it is today, 16th of May. Four weeks to go today to the show. And I would think it's probably very debatable whether a number, a number of these um, dwarf plants and the, the sort of floribundas, which are basically an overgrown dwarf, whether they're going to be ready for the show. I mean, there's a number of these, absolutely no sign of any bloom. Uh, the body of the plant is fine, uh, but there's no sign of any bloom. Now, I have gone over now to a high potash feed. Uh, I'm basically using a tomato feed. Um, although we have technically been led off the leash a bit now by the government, um, the lockdown is sort of in England anyway, is sort of over. Um, we can get out to garden centres of the like, but I haven't done that yet. But I, I will certainly need to probably get some high potash feed. I mean, I am just using um, sort of stock tomato feed at the moment, which more or less is, is fine. It'll be a high potash, high potash uh, concentrate. Um, and that, that's what you're really looking for. So I've got two extremes. Um, some of the plants that I've not stopped are obviously coming into flower now. This is quite a nice one. This is a plant called Jean Swansborough. Uh, it's got a lovely pale pink bloom. It's uh, a sister of Shrivenham Star, which is the double. Um, and this is interesting because this plant was stopped at 18 weeks and it's already beginning to come into bloom. Some of the blooms are a little bit immature, what I call immature. We, I've spoken about those in the, over the last few videos where the early blooms can sometimes on doubles be a little bit sort of substandard really. Uh, but this is a, a brother and a sister seedling released in the same I think they were released in the same year uh, by my nursery. That, that's lovely. It's got a lovely, large, single bloom, really bright and really lovely. It wasn't stopped, though. It's just been potted up and grown on, but looking quite nice. But this was stopped, and I'm surprised it's coming so early. It is a very, quite an oldish, gnarled-up plant. Four years old, that. Probably the last year that I'm going to be sort of keeping it as a show plant. So I'll get some cuttings from it later in the summer. Regals, as I've said, these are unstopped. Spoke about that one just earlier, but really lovely colour. Uh, I've got a few others that, again, haven't been stopped. It's one, Strawberry Fall. This is one of my favourites. This is being trialled by Fibrex. Um, absolutely gorgeous bloom, and I, I think the name Strawberry Fall, absolutely, uh, as, a, as named after the dessert, uh, really... Uh, captivates the, the colouring of it, sort of raspberry base, strawberry uh, uppers, and, you know, really does uh, look the business. Very large bloom again. Uh, but these weren't stopped. These are just youngsters that have been grown on. Um, I have got stopped versions. And I did my regal stopping in late December. And realistically, 
I'm not sure that there, many of them are going to be ready for the shows. The only plants that I, the only regals that I think that may be ready for the shows are my Elsie Taylors, which is the one that I've done, named after my mother. And these are just beginning to break. Now, conversely, these, of course, are actually coming a little bit early. Um, I wouldn't ideally want these um, to be coming out quite so early. I'd like a full sort of block of bloom all coming at the same time. I've got a fair number that are just one step behind. In four weeks, these will almost certainly be over. Uh, so they'll almost certainly be taken off. But my Elsie Taylors are the only ones that seem to be really beginning to put out some bloom. Right now, Gosbrook Susanna always does come pretty good for me. It's an early, earlier flowering variety anyway. Um, this is the Floribunda um, sort of size, overgrown dwarf in a six inch pot. Um, and this, this begun to flower. I mean, this was stopped at 18 weeks and this is coming early. Uh, it's surprising really because of course most of the um, my plants as I've already said certainly on the dwarf zonal side are, are well behind but another Gosper Susanna just beginning to come through and they're the only ones that are really throwing a lot of bud. Now my standards have begun to flower I'm just going to let them go really now. Uh, we haven't sort of allowed for a standard in the uh, in this sort of virtual show we're going to hold. Something that you will get in standards quite a bit of the time, you will get these young groves growing out the base and just take them off. They're easy to pull off. I've just got a couple of shoots. They're just coming up from the base. They will come up from the roots, but you want to remove them because they're taking energy away, of course from the, the main body of the plant. Some pink edge leaves, and this that's something that I'm going to just talk about now. We have had some really, really unusually cold weather in this last week. Um, bizarre, because two weeks ago we had a really hot week. This last week, just finishing now, um, it's Saturday, as I say, Saturday the 16th of May today. It's been freezing. We've had some of the coldest nights in May in England uh, for a number of years. And I think in Northern Ireland, um, they had one of the coldest nights in May on record. Uh, I've had the heater on most nights. Uh, and it, we have, you know, we've gone back to getting a few pink leaves, which you don't often get really at this time of year. It's quite unusual. But um, yeah, just break them off. Uh, there's not that many, but um, it's just been so unusually cold, particularly this last week. Right, now I've got um, plenty of young Mrs. May last. So I did put up into a four and a half inch or 12 centimetre pot. Um, some of these are quite level, but we're starting to get one or two really elongated branches on them now. And this is because they're young. So any chance they've got to grow, they will go particularly mad. Now see, for instance, on this one, it's really nice and even. All the stems are the same length. So I don't need to worry about that. I can let that go, just enjoy it. It may or may not be okay for the show. There's lots of blooms coming on it, but it's nice and even. Whereas this one has got a really lengthy stem growing up here. Uh, because this is all looking forward to uh, future years for show. Now realistically, all I'm going to do is just cut this down a bit. We've got a whole batch of nice young stems down here that I just want to balance them to. So I'm just going to take this lengthy one off here. I mean, you can, I have got, ooh, that's dropped down. Now that, I could use this for cuttings, but I've got so many of these, I honestly just don't need them. So they'll just go on the compost bin there. Now we've got some others. It's just a question of looking to see now generally what you want to do is you want to take them above an inward facing break because what that'll do is that it will make your plant rounded. So I'm going to really go in quite deep on this. Now as I've already said on many occasions make sure that your plant's on the dry side when doing this. Bit easier to do now when the days are getting longer um, but uh, it just makes it, you know, much easier. The, the wounds are heal off really quickly. Again, loads of cutting material potentially off that. 
Uh, and I've got another one here that's just a little bit too long. And all I'm doing is trying to bring these into line. Now look at that. That now you've got a sort of relatively nicely rounded bulk plant with loads and loads of smaller stems all going to be breaking out to make a more balanced plant. Um, so when plants are young, you know, you've got the latitude to be cutting taller stems off at any time of year. You can do it at any time. Um, obviously, if you're wanting it for show and it, it would say be in the in the springtime, you don't want to be cutting back then. But this is a plant that's got lots of time ahead of it, a year at least. Um, and, you know, that that's now nicely balanced. We've got lots and lots of uh, young stems ready to burst through and make a nicely balanced plant. Now, you can see up here, most of these regals have barely got any sign of any bloom, just the very, very basics of uh, bloom starting to come. So I'm really not sure that I'm going to be seeing too much in the way of a lot of bloom on my regals in four weeks' time. It's always difficult to know, as so if we get a lot of warm weather, which we're going to start getting next week again, they may come through. I mean, I've got one or two just beginning to break, but um, it really does go to show you, though, that I really do need to ensure that I get my stopping done in December. Really is quite bizarre. Now, my variegated form of uh, Mr. Wren here, this is actually really beginning to fill up in this middle part, which is what I wanted. Um, I'm really hopeful that by the time of next year's show, which hopefully will be a normal show, this will be, these base stems will be up to the top uh, and all these lower stems will have filled out the middle. So I'm hopeful that that's going to be pretty decent. In the meantime, I've done a bit of a cheat and I put two plants in a really big pot. Uh, that's down underneath in store at the moment until I sort of sort things out here. And um, I think that's looking, uh, that has the potential to look quite decent. But uh, we'll have to see how it goes. Not sure I'll be able to use it for show because it's two plants. But um, we'll have to see. I think that's looking quite nice at the moment. Okay, that's just about it from me today. I hope you've enjoyed this little look around my glass house. And don't forget, if you're thinking about showing, have a, have a go. I think it's going to be a great, it's very informal. We will have an expert judge. It's going to be a really great time having the show. So look forward to that. I'll certainly do another video before the show. So enjoy the time as your pellies begin to start blooming in this early part of the season. And I'll see you again soon. Please subscribe to this channel and if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. You can follow Mr. Pelagonium on both Twitter and Instagram under Mr. Pelagonium and you can follow the Pelagonium and Geranium Society on Facebook or you can visit the PAGS website at thepags.org.uk.